I've got something else really, really, truly special to show you here. Um, because the uh, the uh, George Cleverly that I've been working on for weeks and weeks and weeks, they're coming up to sort of being finished. If you've seen the previous videos of the 69 George Cleverly, you'll know they're close. They're not finished yet, but I need to decide what, what to do next. And I think it's going to be these two pairs. They're absolutely spectacular. Um, they're Henry Maxwell, and um, th that's Henry Maxwell when they traded on um, on Dover Street. Let's just see if we can get the um, the teal sock on the. Uh, let's just zoom in. This is what's important. Uh, get here we go. Um, is that upside down? No, it's not. Look, I'm looking at it through a mirror, um, but it's not upside down. Um, yeah, Henry Maxwell on Dover Street. So these are roughly, I'm guessing, around about 1950. Um, they don't actually have the original bespoke trees, and these are bespoke trees from another pair of shoes. These are from Bespoke Peel & Co. I don't have the Peel & Co, sadly. Um, I suspect the gentleman that had these pairs made also had Bespoke Peel & Co's, and he got the uh, trees mixed up. Now, these are exactly the same. They're an identical pair made by the same maker, Henry Maxwell, for the same gentleman, and they even have the original, the original heel. This pair have had slightly more wear than this pair. If we look at the soles, yeah, these are, they're just less worn. Um, I suspect he used this pair for walking and this pair more for sort of standing around inside. Um, or possible, it's possible, he used these in the rain and not these in the rain, but anyway. And the gentleman had two identical pairs and I couldn't be happier to have them. Um, they're very, very dry. They look gorgeous, but they're very dry and they're going to take some time to renovate before I'll dare to wear them. Because if I wear them dry, they will almost certainly crack here and they'll almost certainly crack around the heel, um, around the heel area. But, um, and these, these sort of wrinkles, I'll be able to get those out. Because these are not the correct shoe trees, the, the wrinkles are formed. And I will, I've got lots of trees, so I'll put a better fitting tree in that will pull them tight. I'll have to remove the polish. There's a huge amount of polish on there, but it's a bit dry. And if I start, if I try to polish them over that, it will just crack. And moreover, the skin below the dry polish, it will be impossible to moisturize it and it will crack. So I'll have to spend some hours removing all of this ancient polish. And it's, it's kind of the polish has, it's filled in the little tiny holes. And um, a lot of the holes are blocked with polish. So that will take some time. I'll remove the polish, then I'll moisturize the skins, and then I'll repolish them. Um, it's possible, um, because I've got two identical pairs, I'm thrilled to have both, but I don't particularly want to have two pairs the same, the same color. If I can lighten one of the pairs, then I would probably do the, the more heavily worn pair, which is these. If I'm able to, as I remove this, the old polish, I might be able to lighten the skin very slightly and recolor this one in black. But I'm not going to destroy the shoe in an attempt to do that. If I think I can strip some of the, because um, of course black is the very worst possible base to be stripping out. But if I think I can strip that black without destroying the shoe and re-dye it a light colour, I'll do so. So then I have a pair in black and a pair in brown. But of course they'll have like a slightly antique effect because, you know, they'll look very old. They won't look pure. They'll, they'll have flashes of black. So they'll have a very antique effect. But honestly, I couldn't be happier with these. And uh, actually that the heel's a bit, they'll need a bit of work. It's, it's actually a bit worn. I'll probably end up replacing that heel. There's not much left of it. Let's have a look. Yeah, this heel's still got m more than enough. That one's almost as new. But this one, I'm afraid, is actually, it's worn down to the limit. So I'll almost definitely replace that heel. In fact, I won't almost, I will replace it. It's, it's worn down. But um, they are totally original. And um, there's virtually, this is really hard. You know, not worn thin there. And this will moisturize and clean up. They will come up beautifully. They won't look new. But my goodness me, they'll look glossy and I'll get the wrinkles out. But, the other interesting thing about this particular pair, they've still got the original laces. Invariably, laces of this age, they rot away. And I don't have any shoes, any bespoke shoes with ribbon laces. Now they are absolutely fantastic. That's a metal, yeah, that's metal. And of course, what's happened here, the laces have faded in the sunlight, but they don't seem to have rotted. I normally use um, three millimeter flat laces these have got a round lace, they're, they're 2.53 millimeter. I definitely won't keep those. They're modern and not to my taste, but I'll go for something of a similar diameter, but flat. 
But being as this pair still have the original laces, I'll certainly be keeping those. But I will have to dye them. I'll have to remove the laces and I'll, I'll, I'll dip them in, um, in fabric dye. Because they faded. And by the, you know, they suit the shoe as it is because the shoe's a bit faded and the laces fade. But by the time I've revived and recoloured this shoe, those laces are going to look a bit grotty. But I don't have anything like them. Um, they're truly amazing. You know, they, they are wider than my normal choice. But these are the original laces from certainly at least 1950, possibly even earlier. They wouldn't surprise me if they're from the 1940s. But they really are glorious. Um, I'm due to make a couple more videos, finally, um, finally showing the finished, the finished uh, uh, George Cleverleys. And then once those Cleverleys are completely finished and on my feet, then I will set about these two pairs of absolutely stunning Henry Maxwell. Couldn't be happier to have these in my collection. And I'll, and I'll show you the... Um, I, w I won't call it a restoration because they don't actually need much restoration, but they definitely need reviving. They're tired, they're dry, and they're hard. But we won't be resurfacing these skins or anything mad like that. They are in exceptionally good condition. I will just be moisturising, taking the wrinkles out, but they won't need any resurfacing. So they'll be refreshed. But nonetheless, it's going to take many, many, many hours. To remove the polish will take a lot of time. And if I decide to take the colour out of one of the shoes, that could well take 10 hours or more. So there's a lot of time involved. And of course, we'll be needing to moisturise the linings. That skin will be very dry, but it'll be mostly moisturising, not restoration, just, just reviving them. And they're just magnificent. English sort of bespoke at its very finest.